more on the six transistor double sideband transceiver for 40 meters. I haven't taken out any transistors this time, but I have changed the frequency control. Instead of using 7.2 meg ceramic resonators, which some people have found hard to get, I've used crystals instead, in the form of a Super VXO circuit. Using two lots of crystals, some series inductance and the variable capacitor, you can get some amazing pulling ranges. I'll show you how, and draw the circuit. I've moved a few things around on the front panel. The transmit LED has been moved to the centre. That doubles as a dial indicator when I get around to putting numbers on the dial. The new switch on the top right switches between crystal A and crystal B, allowing two lots of tuning ranges. VK3 LAJ, go ahead, uh, VK7 NWT and big group name Scott, over. Uh, I've taken out the 7.2 meg ceramic resonator. In its place are two banks of two crystals. They are switched by the crystal switch. That adds a bit of capacitance, reducing the range from each bank of crystals. However, the increased range from having the two lots of crystals makes it worth it. The RF chokes provide inductance in series with the crystal to drop its frequency to well below what's marked on the case. Their values are critical and must be experimentally determined. You'll almost certainly need two or three RF chokes of different values in series to get a good match between VXO pulling range and frequency stability. The more you pull the VXO, the less stable it is, but the more contacts you'll get because you've got a wider tuning range. Even if by a stroke of luck, the value that you're using adds up to a preferred value and you could substitute one RF choke, I suggest you don't. If you do, you'll get different results to if you're using three or so in series. So get a tuning range that you're happy with and leave it. The other thing is you don't want the RF chokes to be too near bits of metal, for instance the lid of the box. That will change its pulling range somewhat. Oh, really? oh, we sort of got stuck into the, about the, end, of the end of the stuff there in the 80s. In case you want to build the oscillator as part of another project, like a direct conversion receiver, I'll draw it out again. It's very similar to the ceramic resonator oscillator, except for the crystals and the switching arrangement. I'm using a transistor radio plastic type tuning capacitor with the two sections in parallel.
I'll explain the parts in the VXO. I've already mentioned the tuning capacitor. Here we have a single pole double throw switch. That switches between two banks of two crystals in parallel. The crystal frequencies I'm using are both commonly obtainable. 7.122 and 7.159. That's actually double the colour burst crystal of 3.58. Uh, 7.122 is perhaps the less common of the two, but you can order it fairly cheaply from overseas, so I recommend you get a number of those crystals. The series inductance, trial and error. They're just little moulded RF chokes. You might want to try your own coils. Um, you start off with a fairly low inductance. You measure the tuning range from the bottom up to the top as you adjust the tuning capacitor. Um, you turn the oscillator off, you turn it on again, you do that at both the bottom and the top end of the frequency range because you want the oscillator to start reliably no matter where it's set. As for the values that I've used for the small RF choke, it's 22 microhenry, 10 microhenry, and the final one is 3.3 microhenry. But, as I mentioned before, don't use those values first up. Use lower values and gradually increase the inductance and measure the increase in frequency range. Verify that it starts up properly and reliably and also it's reasonably stable. You might want to experiment with voltage regulation, maybe a Zener diode or a three terminal regulator. The maximum capacitors of these, um, just the little transistor radio tuning capacitors, one's 160, the other is about 60. If you've got a larger variable capacitor, you can just use a single gang. Uh, the metal type are fine, although I use the plastic type. Um, these little tuning capacitors have little trimmers on the back. It is very important that you set them to minimum capacitance. That's with the plates fully unmeshed, not overlapping. You've got two lots of plates, stay, uh, the steel plates and the moving plates. Uh, the reason for that is you want the minimum possible capacitance on your tuning capacitor because that affects the top end of your tuning range and you want to get as high a pulling range as you can get. The pulling range obtained is quite spectacular. With the 7.122 meg crystal, I can get 7060 to 7115. With the 7159 crystal, the range is 7134 to 7154. That's a less active part of the band, but it's still useful for WIA broadcasts and callbacks. Note that it misses the AM frequency of 7125. But if you did want that frequency, I would suggest making a VXO with a 7.122 meg crystal and using very small capacitance and no inductance. You might just be able to pull the crystal up to that frequency. OK, Keith, dear, they are more some of those features, especially when there's uh, oh, probably a dozen different uh, varieties. Chelsea Beach, VK5NJ. Very good, Peter. Uh, I have you a solid 5 and 5. 
a solid five by five and coming through extremely well, Peter. If you can get ceramic resonators for 7.2 megs, then I'd still highly recommend them. But if you can't, don't give up the project. Instead, experiment with VXOs. Super VXO circuits can get a useful pulling range. And with crystals like 7.122 and 7.159 being cheaply available, you can easily cover a useful segment of 40 metres.